We're talking to Al Olson, who is uh, your collections and exhibits director at the Dallas Historical Society. Is that right, Al? Yes, sir. That's correct. Cool. Well, give us a bit of background on the DHS and when it was founded and what its mission is all about. Well, the Dallas Historical Society was founded in 1922, and it was founded by some of the leading citizens of Dallas who were interested in preserving the history of Dallas. And our mission is to do just that. We are one to collect, preserve, and present the history of Dallas and North Texas to its citizens. Wow, 1922, you guys have been around for a long time. And, and give us a bit of your background. How long have you been with uh, the DHS? I've been with the DHS now nine years. I was uh, a couple years before that, I was over at the Natural History Museum and they brought me on board uh, to help with the construction of the old Red Museum downtown mm -hmm. who had hired the DHS to provide artifacts. Cool. And your background, I understand, is as an archaeologist. So yes. how did you transition into uh, being a historian, more or less? Well, it's actually quite natural. Um, the archaeology is dealing with history, of course, human history. And the history of a historical society is the same thing. Uh, just a little more recent in my case. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. uh, most of my college experience is a little older. Mm -hmm. What's the structure of the DHS like? All right, we have a full-time staff of nine people uh, who is headed by a director, and then we have a board uh, who functions as our guidance and uh, trusteeship, and then we have a large membership of just public citizens who have an interest in history. We use interns, volunteers, uh, help from the public, uh, do quite a bit of outreach to schools. That's one of our main focus is the grade school children who are have free, uh, the tax requirements uh, for public history in uh, Texas history. Cool. And how many members roughly you know, in the organization right now? Any idea? Or? Right now about this time we have uh, about 500 public citizens who are members. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, other people who are interested who join via the website, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, Contributing donors, for example, we have about a hundred uh, citizens that are in our fellows category as well. Hmm. Great. Um, so tell us about the renovations going on at the Hall of State. And will this be affecting the uh, State Fair at all? Uh, no, the good news is actually we will be open about one day before the State Fair opens. Wow. Uh, we're going to make that deadline. Uh, Phillips Mays Construction has done a very good job with that and along with the city uh, making sure that things stay on schedule. Uh, the public won't see a lot of physical change to the building, but they will feel it. Uh, this bond package that was passed uh, for the Hall State is completely changing our heating and cooling system. A lot of the wiring uh, will have an ADA restroom for the first time. Wow, <laughs> There's a lot of nice little add-ons that won't be immediately visible to the public, but are very important to the infrastructure of the building. Okay. And during the renovation, you've had to move everything over here to this off-site warehouse. Um, that was a big project, I'm guessing. Quite a bit. It took a lot of planning, a lot of detail to make sure that it went off without a hitch. Of course, we want to make sure that everything gets here uh, without any damage whatsoever. And uh, that takes uh, quite a bit of diligence on our part and the movers' part. Uh, we spent about eight months planning, organizing, and then uh, about three to four weeks executing the move. Wow. And how many items in the collection that you pulled? We have an estimated three million items. Right. So that's a lot of planning and a lot of moving and uh, keeping track of where everything is got to be a, a real nightmare. It can certainly be. <laughs> What's the oddest item in the collection? The most peculiar of all items that you have in the collection. And then give us kind of a scope of the kinds of items that you hold. Odd is always a hard statement to quantify. Um, I saw a pair of crutches over there. <laughs> well, that's not so odd when one has the history of them, perhaps. Uh -huh. okay. uh, belong to someone you know, who may have been well known or came from Baylor Hospital, those kinds of things. Yeah. Uh, one of the larger items that is a bit more unusual for us is uh, we have a soda fountain that was in the Dr. Pepper bottling plant on Mockingbird. Right. Uh, which is, of course, a very large artifact, mm -hmm. uh, not easy to display or manage. So that's a bit odder than most folks find in their garage, sure. perhaps. <laughs> sure. Now, um, do you have some Native American items 
and um, yes, uh, unfortunately, uh, most Native Americans that are indigenous to this part of Texas uh, had very few possessions. They were very nomadic, mm -hmm. uh, so we have arrowheads, a few bits of pottery, and things like that. Mm -hmm. But actually, our better holdings of Native American are actually some of the uh, northern plains Sioux items we have. Mm -hmm. Not too many, uh, but some very nice ones, including a wedding dress that's on display down at the uh, Music Hall in Fair Park right now. Mm -hmm. What about controversial items in terms of provenance? Are there things that you hold that you're not sure if they're real or not? Well, we had a piece that we recently investigated. Um, we found a letter in the collection that was a copy, and it said copyright on top, of Abraham Lincoln's letter to Mrs. Bixby. Uh, you may be familiar with that from the story of Saving Private Ryan. Right. It's the one he reads uh, about uh, her sons being laid on the altar of freedom. Uh, we looked up the signature and compared it to Lincoln's. It was not Lincoln's, which did not mean it was not an official government copy. It could have been in the sense that a secretary had transcribed it because copy machines didn't exist back then. Sure. Uh, we had it professionally investigated uh, to make sure that it was or was not, and in this case it was not. Mm -hmm. It's still interesting in that a private citizen saw a copy of the letter printed in the newspapers, which was done at the time, and transcribed it and mailed it to either a friend or family member which tells you what a striking piece of prose the letter was. It's considered one of Lincoln's best written pieces. Thanks for the tour you gave us earlier, which You're we'll welcome. be showing some photographs of uh, in the article. So. Our pleasure. We are here for the public.